Hello! If you want to actively participate in this tutorial, you can click the link to the Google Colab book in the description below. Today we are going to introduce an interesting example of data visualization. And today we have a very special guest, um, Kim Hee. Uh, so Kim Hee, what do you want to show us today? Hi Max, thank you for having me. Today we will solve the mystery of the cholera outbreak in Broad Street in London in 1845 using the programming language Python. Geo visualization is called. It's easy to do with Python and its library. It's not rocket science. So that's perfect for me because I'm not a rocket scientist. So tell me more about this example, Kimi. All right, it's a really interesting example um, happening in London in 1854. Back then, cities in Europe were not as clean as today. And London one, was one of them. And the quality of air was not surprisingly bad. And people believed that the bad air transmitted all the disease, including cholera. However, Dr. John Snow believed something else. He believed the cholera was a waterborne disease, not the airborne disease. And he proved his hypothesis by plotting all the cholera death cases and public water pumps on the map. Back then, houses did not have their own water supply, so everyone had to get water from these pump. Ah, so that's really interesting. So the only Jon Snow I know was uh, actually from Game of Thrones. Um, so I say let's get started. Um, let's create the study with Python. So how do we start, Kimi? I have no idea. Well, um, it's easy. We're gonna use Google Colab book. Um, I'm going to work on it with uh, with you today. What the hell is Google Colab book? So it's like Google Docs. It allows you to write and execute Python in your browser. And you can work with it with many people. Ah, oh, wow. This is cool. And this is completely free? Yes, it's free. And you can... It's like a cloud editor. You can use it with many people. All right. That's pretty cool. Um, so let's get started. So how do we start? So probably we need to import some libraries, which we are going to use. So Kimi, which Python packages do we need? Well, surprisingly, we need just two packages. One is volume. Another one is pandas. All right. So we can go on the Colab book and then I can demonstrate how to import the packages and how to create the map object and plot the data on top of the map. That's pretty cool. Let's get started then. Sure. Um, so first order, the first order, we need to import two packages. Volume is the package to plot the map object. Another one, pandas. Uh, successfully loaded. Um, the next order, we need to define the coordinate of our interest. So we want to visualize Soho district. And this is the coordinate information. Mm. I got it from Google. Ah, okay. And the coordinate probably are like um, geo coordinates. So we have actually two values. We have uh, latitude information. And this is based on the equator, which is zero degree and the North Pole, which is 90 degree. And if we want to then uh, find a point, we just need to find uh, the correct um, degree angle. Um, so first for the latitude and the second uh, variable is the longitude and the longitude is basically also a degree number. Um, it's based on the prime meridian, which I think runs through Greenwich uh, in England, which is zero degree. And then based on these two um, slices of the Earth or uh, circles around the Earth, uh, we can define a coordinate. And this coordinate um, would be here in green. So it's just two values uh, of um, 
angles basically and with that we can specify each coordinate in the whole wild world exactly that's also um <laughs> the um, parameter when we are using navigation on our smartphone ah cool and you can just put that into um, this folium thing of yours Exactly. So here we define the coordinate of our interest. And now I'm going to create um, the map object with volume. So with volume, there are multiple classes. I'm going to use map classes, map class. And uh, there are a bunch of arguments we can pass, pass to. Uh, but we don't need everything. We need just a couple of um, couple of arguments. Uh, important thing is location. You have to assign the coordinate information, which we just defined above. Uh, and for the cosmetic things, I would I would also pre uh, pass two more argument size of the mm. outcome, um, which I would like to make it a little bit smaller. And I can see like Google Colab book is actually helping. It's always suggesting stuff with a lot of words. Right. It's a pretty, pretty convenient to ah, use and, it. And it even gives you options for parameters. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, that's pretty nice. Easy to use. So that's it. Creating map object. And this is how you print it out. Wow. The map basically. Oh, easy. that's so cool. And if we compare that to the original map, it actually looks still the same. There's still the same street, maybe some different names, but in general, it's uh, basically the same. Right. That's so cool. Um, right. It's a little bit uh, more colorful compared to the original one, but uh, the street is basically the same. So the next order I'm going to do, I want to make this map more similar to the original one. Ah, you mean black and, and white. Exactly. And that's pretty easy applying the style layer on top of the original map object we just created. Um, and this time I'm going to use tile layer class and apply the style uh, which is called stammer, stay, stay, stay and toner. Mm. And then I want to add this extra layer to the object we just created. Then let's see how it works. Surprise. Wow, now it really How looks easy. black and white like it is hand drawn. That's pretty cool. Yes. And it's pretty easy to uh, to do it, just one line of the code. And uh, here I would like to explain with of layer in, um, notion of the layer. Mm -hmm. All right. So basically, did we just change like how OpenStreetMap looks or how, mm -hmm. how does it work? Um, well, let's go back to the slide. Um, and there you would see the first layers of the op OpenStreetMap, which is the map object we name as map underline Soho. Mm -hmm. And this is a base object. All and right. Then and this is basically what this OpenStreetMap thing is going, giving us. So we cannot do anything with it. It's just something we accept. Right. This is by default object, but we can make a little bit of, um, we can make cosmetic changes on All top right. of it. That's pretty cool. So uh, then we basically create some sort of layers. Right, so it, we, in the end, accumulate multiple layers on top of each other. Mm. Um, so what we just have done, we apply style layer. Mm. And then later on, we're going to make, we're going to apply um, 
we're gonna make markers of All right. and the, the data. These markers, you again probably need the coordinates for the markers, so longitude and latitude. Right. Exactly. So we need a list of the coordinate we are interested to visualize, and then we are gonna cover it on the following. All right. Following. I'm getting excited. So let's go back to your collab book and let show me how you can put uh, markers on it because we actually want to solve where the cholera outbreak is coming from is it correctly so first i think we need to see um all the people who died of cholera is that correct right um so here is an empty um map i would say there's no information who has uh, who have been died in which house and which uh, the information of the water pumps are missing here, so we are gonna illustrate it on the on the base map on top of the base map. So next order, I'm gonna load two data sets of our interest. One is about the cases of deceased patient, and another one is the list of the public water pump. Um, well, the data are available in GitHub, so That's everybody a very long can address. access this, right? But everybody can uh, download and access the data. Um, in fact, um, this is the data set uh, was collected by Dr. Snowden, um, and it's publicly available. And here is that name of the data frame. So this is the... Object. What is the data frame, Kimi? Well, data frame is um, object pandas packages, pa Python packages can create. So uh, for mainly... me, it's still difficult to understand. Is it like some sort of Excel file? So like a table or what? Right. It looks somewhat Excel file. So it has rows and columns it's tabular style data set it can manipulate and load and all right clean. excel i fully understand continue <laughs> and you're gonna get this idea um because i'm gonna print out uh, uh first three records of this file so the first line we read data from the GitHub, so it doesn't have to be on your local computer. And then uh, the second lines, uh, I want to show three records from this file. And ah, you can wow. easily print out much more with uh, the parameter of 10 or 100, so, whatever you want. What does the column mean? Like, uh, well, you're talking about this header. Yes, exactly. Right, um, so FID, it's um, ID incrementally increasing from zero to certain number. And then death, it's the number of the deceased patient from mm. these coordinates. So how many people died basically in that house, more or less? Right, exactly. Maybe one house whole family died from the cholera. Mm. Maybe just one weak family member died from the cholera. All right, and long and lat is basically longitude and latitude. So the coordinates where the house lies. Exactly. Mm. So there are a lot of dead people, a lot of houses. So how do we plot that? Um, well, before we gonna plot it, I would like to load another data set and then we go on uh, create hmm. another layer on top of the base map. Layers so, again, always these right. layers. Um, and then second data set, we just need to change the last part of the path. So we want to load the public water pump. So in um, medieval so time, no. houses didn't have their own water supplies, so they could only go to public pump for water, right? Right. So there was no water supply system back mm. then. So 
So we are using same um, same function call. So PD, uh, it's a label for a pandas. I give the label when I import this mm. library in the beginning. So I don't have to write pandas. Um, instead, I just um, so use pandas the label. pandas is basically Excel for Python. Um, you can take it like like that. You can understand it like All right. that. <laughs> I don't need to know more. And then we also print out um, this example record from the water pump. Uh, there we have less less number of column um, because we don't uh, have deceased number of patients. We just need to know where just the water the pump is. Right. All right. So um, can we plot now? Yes, exactly. Um, but um, in order to plot it, um, we have to prepare data which volume could understand um, what I mean mm. by, uh, by this. Volume cannot understand this tabular style input data. So it's expecting to, to have list type data. And that's not so hard to convert from the pandas data frame to the list. All right, Kimi, show me how it's done. All right, I would name it like um, list and death. And I'm gonna convert it from the data frame death. Um, okay, first, Path of um, coordinate. Coordinate, I need two fields, which is longitude and latitude. Because that are the information the volume needs probably to know where the markers are going. Right, so this is how I convert the data in the data frame to the list type. And now it will look not, not like tabular style, but it's simply the list type of the data. And um, it's, it's okay, you can still read, but it's not uh, like in the shape of the table. Yeah, don't worry. <clears throat> so now can we plot finally or? Yes, uh, but uh, since we have to repeat this uh, task for other um, mm, for the pumps, another data set, data set exactly. So I would prepare it already here. So I'm gonna make pump locations coordinate um, converted to to the list type and. Finally, I also want to get the information of um, how many people died at certain location. I'm, I'm, I need different field. I need data from the death field, um, the column is called death. Got three list, which uh, finally can fit into the, the base map. All right, so now we create layers again, is that correct? <laughs> exactly. Um, so what we just have seen is the list of the data and we need to iterate every element in the list and then plot it as a marker on the map. So iteration, we will gonna iterate with for loop. Um, so let's first iterate, um, pump 
because it's uh, easier to plot. So we gonna iterate list pump coordinate list. Um, go to the maximum length of the list. And then we are gonna use volume and then use regular polygon marker class to plot each of the data point as a marker. So we need to assign a couple of arguments. We are using regular polygon markers to visualize each of the data points on the list. Um, and we are going to iterate the list pump list first. So we iterate with eyes. So iterate means you take um, each of the rows and do something with it, correct? Right. So when I print out this list pump, you see a handful of um, elements in the list. So basically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight elements are available yeah. in the list. And it will make eight times of iteration. So you need to basically plot one pump eight times, correct? Exactly, exactly. All right. So uh, we need to feed the coordinate information to the class. And then uh, we need to define some cosmetic things. Um, how big the marker should look like. So I would say radius size as 10. It can be arbitrary. You can make it bigger. I would say 10 is good number. And then uh, the, the color for the marker, since it's a pump, it's a pump data point. So I will make it as blue. And um, opacity, um, well, if I remember correctly, by default, it's one, but let's still define. It's not so transparency. And then that's it. That's um, for the um, important argument for the cosmetic things. So we create a class, and then we add this layer to the base map, which we name as map Soho. Mm. And then we can print it out, map Soho. And let's All right, so see basically, how it looks like. we create a new layer. And mm. this layer just goes on top of the open street map. And exactly. now we can basically see uh, these blue diamonds. And these blue diamonds are these pumps, basically. Right. Right. So mm. if you zoom out, you'll see more. Um, but by default, you see only right. six pumps on the map. So we created three layers so far, base layer, and then styler layer, and then pump layer. All right. And now we are going for the next layer, the dead people, the cholera. Okay, so, right. That's uh, the most important data set. I would say uh, I'm gonna reuse the part of the part of the code. This time I'm gonna iterate different list, list of death coordinate, and then um, we assign the coordinate information of the dead patient. Um, well, also one more thing I'd like to change. Instead of we fix the size of the marker, we want to assign, um, well, the number of the cases, dead cases to the marker. Ah, so, so, you, if, so you want to basically mm -hmm. see in the marker size how many people died there. Exactly, so if there are more death cases, you will see bigger size of the marker. If there are just one case, you will see like this 
smallest marker size. So basically like all these COVID maps, they are also quite big balls and small balls. Right. Um, this application is currently quite popular for this pandemic you see daily. Um, so it's also the same idea. And uh, Dr. Snow was brilliant that he plot the data on the map. All so, right. Let's see right. if we can identify what caused the cholera outbreak. So the radius size, we have to reference the list of the total death. We prepare it together with other list data set. Um, and then you iterate from the first data point to the last data point. Um, and since it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's different data set, I'll assign different color. I will say red. Um, and then I'll give a little bit of transparency on this data. So again, you just do options. So you could also leave them away, probably. Mm. It's just a style choice. Mm. And um, well, by default of the marker is always diamond, but I can make it little. Um, I can make that rectangular um, rectangular to the round. Uh, simply increasing number of side. Um, so right. there is an <clears throat> argument. It's called number of side. So I see it like, uh, so Google Colab book already suggests me some values for that, uh, for the parameters, but probably there's also a site in the internet I can look up, it's like some sort of Folium documentation. Mm. Yes, you can find Folium API, then you will see all the detailed description of each of the class and also each of the Arguments. All right. <laughs> Maybe I can link that in the description as well. So let's see. Yes. Are let's we see. finished? So we're done. Um, so I'm gonna. Uh, we just gonna add another layer on top of it. And then now we've got also. Wow! Nice data of deceased patient. So that's. So and you cool. see, most of the patient died nearby this water mm. pump. Wow, that's pretty cool. So I know Jon Snow drew an infection zone around the outbreak. Uh, can we do the same? Yes, it's in fact adding another layer on the um, base map. Layers again, wow, right. all of these layers. So, but what's a polygon, Kimia? I have no idea. It sounds like computer games to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the polygon you can imagine as a um, um, list of the coordinate again of every corners of garden fence. Uh, so, so we are drawing a garden fence around an area. Exactly. And you can easily highlight the uh, place you're interested. All right. So we just need basically a list of coordinates again. All right. Yes. Um, oh. And it's very easy. All we right. will use GeoJSON class this time. So what, what's the GeoJSON? Well, GeoJSON is um, another yet another class which can understand this polygon concept mm. to highlight this polygon. So it's importing basically a list again from some text file of coordinates. Right. Um, Where to draw the garden fence. Right. This time it's already in the list, so Folium could understand. We don't have mm. to convert the data type to the list. And this is um, the public data set available on the GitHub. All right. So yep. this is the address. And you mainly this is, again, locations, mm. um, arguments. You fit into this class, and then uh, you add it to the base map, and you will see mm -hmm. um, the highlighted 
areas in London city. All right. Right, it's um, pretty easy. Wow, that's so cool. That feels like I'm in contagion, Kimi. Um, Are you? <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's zoom in. Like, I I think there's something not quite right. Like, go go closer, 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 please. So, Do you yeah. see something strange here? So the thing is, um, there appears to be some houses where there are no dead people. Is that like a mistake or did Jon Snow make an error there? So what's up oh. with that? Well, you mean um, this place, for example? Yes, exactly. And also, well, some other place near there. Right, you have a good... So, I, uh, well, in fact, um, the hint is already on the map. So the old map from Jon Snow. Let's have a look at it again then. Mm -hmm. All right. Ah, so there are like two different type of buildings there. So a green one and a purple one. So one is a brewery and the other one is a workhouse. Hmm. Exactly. So maybe you can explain a bit like what <laughs> well it's not surprising what do you think people drink in brewery ah so did they just drink beer and then they didn't drink water yeah fortunately they drank beer instead of water oh, and wow. they they was able to uh, they were able to survive that's pretty cool kimmy um what's the workhouse i mean like it, it sounds oh. bad <laughs> <laughs> well, workhouse is um, like a place for the homeless people. Uh, lots of people are living there who didn't have enough food or didn't have place to stay overnight. And fortunately, the place has their own water supply system. Oh. And they didn't have to um, use the public water pump. Therefore, they survive. All right. Um, so can we also draw this um, buildings maybe on this map? So yes, with the garden um, fences again. Right. Let's highlight the worker house, workhouse, and brewery, which we are gonna reuse this code we just used. Um, we need to use another argument style function so we apply style uh, with lambda function so we iterate <laughs> the data <clears throat> so a style function is basically just um, something where you define i don't know a color probably or yes exactly so that's a good point so i need to define the color first so then you I'll... tell the style function basically what color the outline and the filling should be. Mm. So it's like a dictionary. Mm. I know that from Photoshop. So it's basically a specification of a color. Exactly. So you got a key and value. So field colors for the brewery. Polygon, we're gonna use this coded color. Maybe this is not necessary to make it so pretty. <laughs> but uh, let's do it. So we already spent so much time making things pretty. <laughs> All right, let's do it really quick. So just pick up the color, whatever you want. It also understands um, the human readable color instead of this code. You can also put blue or green. That's also fine. So here, workhouse, we assign style workhouse. And then we copy and paste for the brewery. Then we assign style brewery for the style function. 
and paste. Oh, there wow. you go. <clears throat> so basically, we could do what Jon Snow did in maybe half an hour. That's pretty impressive. Yes, I think it's really easy. Everybody can uh, follow up if you know basic Python. It's yeah. not super hard. So, okay, and Jon Snow basically drew all the um, color cases and the pumps. And what, what happened then? So how did the story end? Well, um, Dr. Snow, he identified, well, this pump at the center is a pro problematic pump. It, it's, he, he concluded that this water pump was contaminated. Therefore, you see lots of deceased patients around this pump. Um, and then he was able to convince uh, public authority. And then they detach the handle of the water pump of this uh, pump at the center. And then um, the cholera cases decreased. Wow, so it was so the cool. end of the cholera after detach the handle. And all thanks to Geo visualization. Right. He he was able to um, draw a conclusion from the data visualization. And this was the first case of data visualization it's known to be. All right, Kimmy, thanks so much uh, for this cool tutorial. Thank you for having me. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So if you're interested in similar content, um, also about medical informatics, um, IT in healthcare in general, or medical data science, you can subscribe and check out uh, the other videos.